This is Ryan Elliott for ID Box, and we're in Abu Dhabi with me, Joe Markowski. Joe, Bivol Ramirez, official. We're pre press conference here. Brilliant fight to bring the Middle East. Yeah, it's a great fight. Obviously, um, Dimitri Bivol shocked the boxing world, although the fan base, me less so, boxing people in, in, in Vegas with, with Canelo, and obviously, you know, eyeing probably a rematch with, with Canelo at some point, maybe early 2023. But in the meantime, he's got a, a fantastic challenge here in Abu Dhabi. And, one that we're really excited to be involved in and broadcasting around the world. With Abu Dhabi's involvement in boxing, where it seems Saudi Arabia like to have a big one-off event, like we saw with Usyk Joshua too, it seemed like Abu Dhabi wanted a project. How often is the zone going to be bringing cards here? Well, let's see. I mean, that, that we're very, very early. This is a one-off event. We're we're in, in, in discussions with with various people here, uh, along with our partners at, at Matching Boxing. But clearly, it's good for the sport of boxing that you know nations are, are interested in hosting major events. I think it shows the progress that boxing's made. Um, clearly, boxing has an ability to bring eyeballs and attention to parts of the world that, that, that are seeking that attention. And uh, if that can benefit the fighters, the fans and our businesses, then why not? We're, we're very excited to be here and hopefully we can be doing a lot more business here going forward. In terms of what could await the winner of this fight, Canelo came out the other day and said he doesn't want to fight Gilberto Ramirez, he doesn't want to fight other Mexicans. But if Bivol wins and Canelo beats Golovkin, how big is that rematch? Well, it's huge. I think you have to respect Canelo Alvarez's sort of pursuit of greatness, right? I think he wants that, the freedom from a promotional perspective, a broadcast perspective. We, we respect it. He's, he's pursuing greatness. And I think one of his objectives on his list for 2023 is going to be um, to right a wrong from his perspective with with uh, Dimitri Bivol. He's obviously got a major test in a couple of weeks' time with Gennady Golovkin. He's got a score to settle there, which obviously live on, on the zone pay-per-view um, in the US. Um, we're, su- we're, yeah, we're, we're super excited about what the next six or eight months holds for Canelo. He's got, he's got two massive fights, but I think he's got to take um, Gennady first and he's got to take on that challenge and Bivol's got to get through Zerda Ramirez. No small, small test either. So, um, you know, this division is, and, and this sort of, the, the weights around Canelo are, are, are really exciting. And as always, he's going to bring a huge, huge crowd and we hope that Bivol will do the same here. We know we've had Joe Cordina and Rakimov confirmed for this. I believe uh, by the time this goes out, Chantal Cameron and Jessica McCaskill will also be confirmed. We saw the news about Joshua Boazzi, though. Um, Eddie bid $875,000. Ludovella won the purse bid for that fight. Was the plan for DAZN to have that as chief support on this card? Possibly. And obviously, congrats to congrats to Lou. Um, yeah, congrats to Josh as well. Um, look, we've got a great card. And look, the, the, the main event's fantastic. That There's a card, as always, with, with matching will be strong. Um, look, I think you know, the card's not going to lack for for great fights. So, um, yeah, we're not we're not concerned by the quality on the card. I think it's fantastic. We spoke on a little bit on Canelo Golovkin three there, um, pay per view, the zone pay per view in the UK as well. Mm. Why was that needed to make this fight happen? Well, look, the economics of big fights sometimes require that. You know, the first two fights, long before our our existence in the UK, were both pay-per-views um, and, and, and did well. There's an audience for them. Um, the economics of these fights require that. Uh, these, are, these are massive mega fights. Um, Canelo Triple G, the numbers on the first two pay-per-views in the US and around the world were, were huge. Um, and in some cases, the economics t- to make those deals work for everyone involved require that. Um, we think it's a fantastic fight. It's a lot of history. Um, there is a, I think, renewed belief amongst certain corners of the boxing world that Gennady Golovkin uh, is going to be genuinely competitive in that fight. We certainly believe he will be. I think he's got all the motivation in the world to, to do that. Um, and I'm very confident standing here and saying it's a it's a it's a pay per view in the UK. I know perhaps originally we didn't think it needed to be. I will own that. Uh, there's been some recycling of comments I made six or eight months ago, um, which is fair enough. I own the fact that I had a different view six or eight months ago. But to make this deal work, that's what was required, um, and we're confident that it will do good numbers in on both sides of the pond, obviously, particularly in the US where it's going to be traffic stopping, um, you know, major, major sporting event of that weekend. And we're very excited to get to Vegas in a couple of weeks and, and get our teeth into fight week. So, um, look, it's it's part of a super, super strong schedule. I think you're starting to see as a fight fan in the UK now with Eubank Ben coming up, obviously our crossover boxing series, the X series, we're starting to roll out uh, a, a really strong sequence of, of, of fights, a very strong schedule. Um, some of which need to be pay-per-view. 
the vast majority of which will not be pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And I stand by my comments I made a few times that, you know, judge us in a year's time, 18 months time on our value for money versus other players in the market. And I, I remain of the view that our value is going to be very, very strong. If you're a fight fan or you're a crossover fight fan, uh, we're going to bring you fantastic events at, at a very good value for money. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're very happy where we are. The boxing business at the zone is in great shape. The schedule's in, in great shape. We've got more to announce the rest of this year. Obviously, AJ is going to come back at some point, we hope, before the end of the year, if not very early 2023. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're excited about the next six, eight months. You mentioned Anthony Joshua there. Uh, we're kind of in the aftermath now of his fight with Alexander Usyk. We'll start with the fight itself, not the result that you and DAZN would have wanted, but a top fight. And what do you make of the fight? I think AJ performed brilliantly. I think he got beaten on the better night by the by the better man. Um, Alexander Usyk's a pound for pound great. Um, clearly, right now at the top of the heavyweight mix, along with Tyson Fury. And as a fight fan, I very much hope to see that fight happen. AJ you know, did himself proud. He boxed a very different fight. Um, he was very close to executing a pretty perfect game plan. He just got outboxed in, in the championship rounds, which you've got to take your hat off to Usyk for. Um, but look, I think there's a load of really great matchups that AJ can now have in the next stage of his career. And we're going to be right at the heart of that, you know, supporting him and, and 258 as they step into that new phase. And as I say, we hope he can be out December, January. We'd love to, you know, make that happen. And we're, we're working with Eddie and Freddie Cunningham and 258 to, to do so. Yeah, that's what's kind of been said, that he will be back around December time, if, if not January, and that he, he wants to be busy. People are suggesting he may take a break, but he wants to kick on. Yeah. Is that the same as you've heard, that he might fight four times in the next 12 months? Well, let, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think he's probably taking some time to recover physically after what was, a, I imagine, a very grueling training camp and a, and a, and a, and a tough fight. So um, we're, we're going to focus on one fight at a time with AJ. The great news is there's a load of fights that, are, are very, very interesting for him. I, I personally believe if he gets through a few more tests, um, three or four fights, you know, is he back into having a, a world championship shot slot uh, shot? Sorry, I, I would very much hope so. I think that the pathway is for him to do that. Um, let's see what happens. But in the meantime, there is a, a number of great fights that we can make for him and we're well placed to do that. Matrim are excited and we're, we're very excited to obviously have AJ locked in for the next phase of his career, which is will start, as I say, end of the year, early next year. With the Joshua deal that was done between Anthony Joshua and DAZN, um, there was a lot of eyebrows raised when he signed the deal and then obviously the Usyk rematch landed on Sky. Mm -hmm. When you guys did the deal, were you aware there was a good chance it was not going to be with yourselves? Yeah, absolutely. There was a carve out of events that uh, that met that description. Obviously, the, 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 the Saudi government had already made a, a major investment in that fight, so that event was carved out. And we're very comfortable with our with our deal with AJ. We're very excited about it. Economically, money-wise, it, it works for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe he's still right up there with the biggest draws in boxing. He, he moves eyeballs, whatever he does, people are interested in. The next phase of his career may well look different and maybe not what he wanted or uh, in an ideal world, what Matcham and Dazone would have wanted. But, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's a very exciting phase of his career and one that we're going to be very supportive of. Everyone's had their two pence worth on what he said after the fight. What did you think of it? I've never boxed 12 rounds against Alexander Usyk. I've never been in the spotlight to the extent that he's been, and the pressure he's been under is um, insane. And he's carried himself with huge class and dignity for the duration of a very high profile, very uh, pressurized career. So who am I to comment on what it's like to 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 be in that position at the end of a, a fight. Clearly a lot of emotion. I thought his comments and his words and his emotion at the press conference um, are the true reflection of the man. I thought Eddie spoke fantastically well as well. Um, clearly hugely disappointed, uh, had given his everything to, to the, the effort he put in. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and criticize. I've got no place to do that. And I don't, I don't think I need, know what anyone does. It's, it's a, uh, it's a highly emotive thing, and I think he, he showed his, his true class, his true colours once he you know reflected and, and sat in a press conference. So fair play to him for apologising, and you know, I have huge respect for Anthony Joshua across the board. Final subject I wanted to get your thoughts on. Uh, we saw KSI two fights one night, Misfits boxing. Um, a success for his own, do you know roughly how many buys he did? I do, yeah. Uh, we'll keep that under, under lock and key. Um, hugely successful. Any metric you want to look at, 
be it pay-per-view buys, be it audience, be it maybe surprising to you, engagement of traditional boxing fans, the number of markets it's relevant to, the social media and the brand metrics we look at, it's great. And I know your audience maybe as traditional boxing fans don't all love it, um, but, but it's got a place it's got a place in engaging the next generation of sports fans who frankly have grown up in a very different world to, I, I don't know how old you are, but a different environment to how me and you grew up, right? When we were kids, there was a few TV programs and there was sport. These kids have grown up with thousands and thousands of entertainment formats and options on the internet. Um, that means they're more distracted. We want them to be interested in sport. We want them to be interested in boxing. Clearly we're invested in that. To do that, we have to try different things. It doesn't mean we're going to reduce the number of uh, boxing events, core boxing events that we put on traditional boxing events or the number of markets like Abu Dhabi we go and put shows on in. It's a different thing that we hope in time will uh, engage a different audience of fans. It's fantastic that the world's biggest marketeers, the world's biggest influencers are talking about boxing. The fact that KSI is interested and his audience therefore are aware of and interested in Canelo, AJ, Eubank, Ben, etc. Um, it's fantastic for the sport. And I think it's not um, a coincidence that boxing is on this rise. It's not the only ingredient, but it's one of the ingredients um, of boxing being a, a high growth sport amongst younger consumers. Uh, fight sports are definitely growing amongst younger consumers and, and celebrity boxing, crossover boxing, sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Jake Paul, KSI, Logan Paul is definitely a contributing factor to all of that. So. Um, we're not going to apologize for doing it. It's not going to stop our core boxing investment. It's good for the sport. Um, and it's been a great success so far. And it's a series we're going to invest in and a business we're going to invest in. We've got a second event, October 15th. We'll have a third event, mid-November, fourth by the end of January. Um, it's a new segment of our, of our business and we're very excited about it. You mentioned the Hasim Rachman Jr. and Vidor Belfort fight there. Why Sheffield? Sheffield is a fighting city. Um, Maybe not the, the event you'd expect to have in Sheffield, but look, it's an event that, that is truly crossover. It's a professional boxer against an MMA legend. Um, look, I think for the people of Sheffield and the youth of Sheffield in particular, that's going to be really interesting. And it's going to be something that's going to you know retain the subscriptions of people who came in to watch KSI. There's an interest in those guys, given the Jake Paul situation with Rackman. So um, yeah, we're, we're excited about the, the regularity of the events. We've dipped our toes in the water with this 2019 uh, KSI and Logan Paul too, we sort of gave birth to the second phase of celebrity boxing. We stepped away during COVID for, for very good reason. We're now back and we're, we're committed to it. Uh, we maintain the relationships with the, that community with a one eye on doing this. And we've launched what we think is going to be a huge growth segment for our business. So yeah, very, very excited about it. Final one, you've worked with KSI, you've worked with Jake Paul. Callis Owlin said to me last week, numbers wise, that's the biggest fight that can be made by two people wearing boxing gloves. Do you agree? I think it's right up there, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I do. I think it's not a crazy statement. The audiences these guys carry, you got to remember, KSI has got 50, 60 million followers. And what's amazing about these guys, it, they're not just followers who are bots, who don't engage. And these are real people who react to what those guys tell them to do. If they say, we're going to box now, watch our pay-per-view, buy our pay-per-view, they transact, they buy, they, 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 I want to say follow instruction, but they follow their they follow their their talent. They're, they're truly fans, um, which makes it a very very interesting business proposition for us. Um, there'll be real boxing fans who are interested in it. Some of whom are disgusted by it, but a lot of them are going to watch it. Um, so I do think Kala's statement is not crazy. It's right up there with the biggest fights to be made in boxing for sure. All right, Joe. Uh, almost press conference time, so we'll stop it there. But thank you as always for speaking to ID Boxing.